Knowing how your turnout gear works is critical. Most of us don't know. Energy flows from high to low. As, that, as you are in a higher temperature than you, your gear protects you by absorbing energy. As your gear absorbs that energy, it keeps it from getting to your skin, which is here. But it can only absorb so much energy until it starts passing from a high temperature to a low temperature. Great example, let's go back to our recruit academy. I think it's very important that your recruits feel a level of heat for the first time in a controlled environment than for the first time them feeling heat at a fire incident. I think we can all probably agree with that. Does that mean we should put them in the room and cook the crap out of them? Absolutely not. But if you actually want them to feel some heat, the way to do it is not during your typical fire attack evolution. Put yourself, how many of you are, uh, we call them stokers in Maryland. How many people work in your burn buildings, lighting the fires, keeping the fires going during the training exercise? A lot of you, right? So you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. You're in the burn building. You're trying to make the most realistic conditions that you can possibly make based on the limitations that you have, depending on whatever your training facility says those limitations are. You want to make it realistic. You want to make a badass fire. Get your pallets going on there. Add a couple more pallets. Maybe throw some hay on. You're trying to get it to its absolute peak, and then you're going to call the students to come in. Before those students come in, every little bit of fuel you add on there, you are cooking. You're starting to get bee stings. You're feeling really hot. Maybe you've got to go out of the room, get behind a wall, kind of shake it out a little bit, try and center yourself in your gear so you've got more air gaps. Buy yourself a little bit of time. Then you go around. Then you start feeling like you're burning again. That's because you're getting hit with radiant energy. Your gear is full of energy, and it's every little bit is passing through to your skin. You get it to the point where you're ready. You call those students in. Students are outside. They've got cool gear, no energy in it whatsoever. They come in, you got them on the hose line, probably seven of them on the hose line, because that's realistic, but you got 50 students you got to get through in three evolutions. So you get them in there, you pack them all in the fire room, because clearly that's what you want them doing too. You want them getting right on top of the fire before you open your nozzle and do anything about it. Sending the wrong messages again. You get them in the fire room, they go ahead, they apply some water, but not too much water, because if they put the fire out, they just ruin the stoker's day, and he's going to get really pissed off because that bed of coals goes away, and he doesn't have anything to throw pallets on. You all know what I'm talking about. Students put the fire out. Students go outside. The stoker's feeling good about himself. I just showed those new guys what this is all about. Students go outside and start talking to each other. They're pumped up. This is exciting as hell for them. This is as real of a fire as they've been to. Do you feel much heat? Man, they keep talking about how fire is so hot and things like that. Do you feel much heat? No, not really. Did you? No? Man, I was even on the nozzle. I was like six feet from it. I didn't feel that there wasn't a lot of heat. Why is that? Because their gear did exactly what it's supposed to do. It stored some energy. They were only in there for a short duration of time. None of it passed through to their skin. The moment they go outside, all that energy that was in their gear goes from high to low. Low is now outside. So it all cools off. They didn't feel what the stoker felt because the stoker was here, full of energy. So if you really want those students to experience that, it's a matter of time. Not the, how big the fire is at any given time, but how long they're exposed to a higher energy environment so that heat has the time to make it through their gear so they begin to feel it. This is also the reason why I've experienced this a bunch, and you've probably experienced as well. You go to a, what I'll call a pretty decent fire. You're in there for a while. You get the fire knocked down. You're coming out. You get outside and your buddy pats you on the shoulder. 
You want to knock his brains out because it just feels like he gave you second degree burns on your shoulder. What did he do? He took the energy that was in your gear, compressed it, took the air gap away that was kind of shedding some energy off of you, and it passed it all through to you immediately and could potentially burn you. Those of you that have bumped into walls coming out and things like that, and you feel like you got stung by bees, your gear's doing exactly what it's designed to do. The thing is, we can't be trying to guess when this is going to happen and push that gear to the limits like we tend to do. The gear is there as a safety factor. The gear is not there for you to push the limits. Your gear is designed so when everything goes to hell, in theory, you have 17 seconds based on the TPP rating of 35 before you start to get second degree burns through your gear. So when things go bad and it flashes on you, you should have 17 seconds to get out. That's assuming brand new gear, fluffed up, no damage, all is well, perfect air gaps. Not for you to push the limits and push the limits and hope you don't get caught. Here's a test we did at the Pennsylvania State Fire Academy. What this shows you is exactly what we talked about. Watch the guy, watch the thermal imaging camera show how his gear stores energy. Every time he goes in and comes back out, he's got more energy in his gear. Shades of gray, right? He went from what was relatively cool, now his gear is storing all kinds of energy every time they expose themselves to a higher heat environment. And the thermal imaging camera will show you that. Now this is a really serious issue because this exact basement and this exact training academy claim the life of a firefighter. During a training exercise where they were training trainers, It was the last burn of the day. Got to make it good, right? It's the last one. Add a few extra pallets to that fire. In the process of adding a few extra pallets to that fire, he goes into this high temperature line room, and at some point, it is, there is so much energy in there, his face piece fails. His face piece fails, he starts to burn up, he scrambles, he tries to make it back to the door. This is all during an evolution where the students come down the basement, they start flowing water on the fire, they come across the instructor that is burned to death, they think they're just messing with them. Oh, look, they put a dummy here. They grab him, they start dragging him out. It wasn't until they started to get him outside that they realized it was one of their instructors, it was a real person and he was missing his face at a training fire. Serious stuff. 